That's a little of what it sounded like outside Toronto's Pride of Israel synagogue on Wednesday evening when a group of about a dozen protesters wearing black t-shirts with the slogan Jews Say No to Genocide on them learned they weren't going to be permitted to enter the community solidarity event about to happen inside. So while the other guests filed through the security screening machines and had their bags searched, the pro-Palestine protesters promptly plopped themselves down on the main steps leading into the synagogue and refused to move until organizers asked the Toronto police and private security units to physically drag them away and force them to remain on the sidewalk for the rest of the night, which is where I met up with spokesman Gord Sabar, who explained why that decision was unfortunate. Tonight is uh, billed as an event of solidarity against hate. Um, So we came in wanting to listen and to also raise questions because a lot of the politicians that are attending tonight's event um, have actually been responsible for a lot of hate that has happened over the past 10 months to the pro-Palestinian community. Uh, including TPS, which is also one Toronto of, Police, Toronto Police, which is which are also one of the honorary guests at tonight's event. Um, so that was that was our intention, and um, yeah, they're not letting us in um, because we have shirts that say Jews Against Genocide. I'm Ellen Besner, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like for Friday, August the second, 2024. Welcome to the CJN Daily, a podcast of the Canadian Jewish News. <music> I can't date women right now because I'm too busy calling myself a piece of shit. I had a dysfunctional Jewish mother and I had a dysfunctional Native mother. I had 25 full years of utter struggle and failure. I started to realize the absurdity of my inability to let go of this monster of guilt. Sounds like fun, doesn't it? Hi, I'm Ralph Benmer I'm the host of Not That Kind of Rabbi, where we look at people's spiritual journeys and take a little time for their self-reflection, and maybe yours. You can get it all at the cjn.ca slash NTKR or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, it wasn't surprising that the rally organizers had wanted to keep a tight lid on potential security threats, even though they hadn't required anybody to pre register to attend when they'd originally decided just two weeks ago to put the whole solidarity event together. They'd intended it to be a low-key response to having their building vandalized by unknown suspects who threw rocks into the stained glass windows and shattered the glass panels over the main doors, causing at least $13,000 worth of damage, a price the struggling congregation couldn't afford to repair without help. But in recent days, the importance of the evening grew after a surge in anti-Semitic attacks in Toronto saw suspects burning a Jewish school bus, lighting a shed behind a Jewish school on fire, spraying pro-Palestine graffiti on Jewish grocery stores and community centres and nearby businesses and on signs, and Toronto police acknowledging what Jewish leaders have been saying for months, but this time with data to prove it, that since October 7th, police have had to respond to 1,556 hate crimes reported to date, and Jews are by far the main targets of the majority of them. Which is why the MC for the evening, Michelle Axelrod, addressed the frustrations of some of the 1,500 people in the synagogue's main hall, and she asked them not to heckle or boo the mayor or the other politicians who were on hand, or maybe do something worse. I ask that we are all respectful of our speakers, and hold ourselves to a high level of decorum that is fitting of our honored guests. Our goal this evening is to have a positive and respectful exchange of information and ideas which will serve as a springboard to build solidarity against hate. For over two hours, the audience heard from a parade of political leaders trying to do just that. Even a high-ranking inspector from the Toronto police in charge of hate crimes came to reassure the crowd they were on top of things. And for the most part, the audience was polite, even though I did hear somebody shout out, do something about it, when popular city councillor James Pasternak spoke. If we cannot keep our places of worship safe, then nobody is safe. If we cannot drop our children off at a school knowing they are safe, then no one is safe. Our faith groups with their places of worship are an anchor, doing the great things that keep our city whole. Food banks, shelter, counselling, prayer and cohesion and clergy to build hope when there is despair and light when there is darkness. The pride of Israel had its windows broken and its confidence shaken, 
but this strong minion must know that we will stand here in unity for its endurance and safety. The late Rabbi Jonathan Sachs once said, quote, the evidence shows that religious people defined by reg regular attendance at the place of worship actually do make better neighbors. Well, the city of Toronto needs good neighbors. I have seen, I have seen too many, far too many security videos of cowardly acts of hate. Who are these people consumed by hate who would shoot up a girl's school, attack places of worship, and vandalize Jewish institutions? We have seen the hates of our streets. Where were these mobs when 500,000 people were killed in the Syrian civil war? Where were these voices? When... Where were these voices when Saudi Arabia was bombing civilian targets in Yemen? Why didn't they take to the streets for the Uyghurs or the Tibetans? Not a word this past week when a terrorist group based in Lebanon bombed a children's playground in Israel. They don't take to the streets for these crimes against humanity because it doesn't allow them to demonize Israel and the Jews. The incitement has led to violence and vandalism against our cherished institutions. We have heard these protesters who insist they have freedoms and constitutional rights to take to the streets. Well, let me tell you something. I know hate when I see it and these hate rallies are not charter protected. <laughs> Who do they think they are? Who do they think they are? Screaming for intifada, telling Jews to go back to Europe, chanting Zionist boycott in front of Jewish-owned stores, calling for the destruction of Israel, swarming Mount Sinai hospital staff and patients, stopping shopping malls, shooting up Jewish schools, firebombing a Jewish young grocery store. Need I go on? When I ask people to speak out, they are reluctant. They are reluctant for one main reason, fear. People come to Toronto to escape fear and persecution, and now we have a city gripped by fear. No city can survive on this basis. Our next speaker is Mayor Olivia Chow. Olivia, Olivia Chow has served the people of Toronto for over... Toronto Mayor Olivia Chow earned a mixed reception, possibly a sign of lingering resentment, for her perceived lack of support for Israel and for the Jewish community here in Toronto, including her social media posts right after October 7th, even though she did condemn the Hamas attack, but didn't support the annual raising of the Israeli flag at City Hall in May, and later declined to attend the Jewish community's Walk with Israel event in June. Chow didn't address her detractors in the room. Instead, she focused on a more positive tone. We cannot deny it, but together, each and every day, we can stand strong against this hate. And as your mayor, let me be clear, anti-Semitism and hate are not welcome here. Toronto must remain a place where Jewish people can feel safe. And as your mayor, working closely with the police chief, city staff, city council, we will continue to do everything we can to ensure that hate will be stamped out. You have my promise. In fact, I was proud to stand with Councillor Pasternak and all the four deputy mayors as we put forward and pass a new package of initiatives to combat hate and foster belonging in our city. Because the terrible act of vandalism, the act of hate against this synagogue and its congregation shattered more than just windows. It shattered the peace, the freedom to be who you are, no matter your faith, orientation or where you come from, from that makes Toronto such a special place to live. And while the windows of this synagogue has been replaced and this front door swung open tonight for all of us to reclaim the space in the name of peace, I know the pain remains. 
Ontario Solicitor General Michael Kersner was unusually eloquent and recited the prayer for the State of Israel in Hebrew. He also urged the Jewish community to demand more of their neighbours and vowed that his premier, Doug Ford, had their backs. Although Ford, the Conservative leader, has not attended many pro-Israel or Jewish public rallies since the Conservative premier spoke at the first official gathering held right after October 7th at Mel Lastman Square. And tonight, we are of equal, Jew and non-Jew alike. People of faith, secular and religious, people of decency and people of concern. And yes, we have been tested again, now confronted by an evil awakening that threatens everyone. No one is immune. This evil, this hate, undeniable, is a deepening parabolic rot that is anti-Semitism. And it is on social media, on our university and college campuses, in our schools and on our streets. And we ask ourselves again, what kind of society have we turned into? And we remind those that may not share our love for everything our community has become, including taking our rightful place on the metaphoric quilt of Ontario, that things matter, that some things have to matter, the rule of law must matter, understanding tolerance <laughs> must matter. And our inherent right to live safely in our communities must matter, and the right to wake up our kids in the morning and check in on our parents and our seniors and see everybody go off during the day and come home at the end of the day and have a place, Rabbi, to pray safely. This must matter. As the night continued, some of the loudest applause was reserved for the federal Conservative Party politicians, including newly elected MP Don Stewart, who recently captured the riding of Toronto St. Paul's. I'm proud to be that voice for St. Paul's in Parliament and more broadly a voice for our Jewish community. I, I have been elected at a time of increasing hate crimes, rampant violence, and extreme anti-Semitism, all of which, in some respects, has made our communities, our city, and our country nearly unrecognizable. I may be new to politics, but I am not new for standing up for what's right. And that's why we're in this room here together tonight. We're going to stand up to fear, we're going to stand up to hatred, and to terror. Our country grapples daily with numerous issues that threaten the livelihoods of Canadians. Violent crime, for example, is up 150% in the past nine years. We've all seen the protests. They incite violence and intolerance and have crossed the line. Unlawful encampments have threatened the safety of our students. They threaten the safety of our students to feel safe on campus. Hate has been given a free reign in our streets and it's unacceptable. Unfortunately for Liberal MP Yara Sachs, she was next in line in this lineup. And the Israeli Canadian and Minister of Mental Health and Addictions and also the local MP for York Centre quickly learned she was going to be in for a rough time. I ask you to please join me in welcoming Yara Sachs to share her thoughts. Once again, I'm asking you to rise above it, put your signs down, or leave the room. Sachs began her remarks by telling the crowd why the pride of Israel means so much to her personally. This was my grandfather's shul. Max Talinsky used to come here every morning. It was, it was the light of his day each and every day after losing his spouse before he found my grandmother to live a long and wonderful marriage together. This place was his home and it continues to be the home for so many in our community. 
But then one person in the audience stood up and held a photo of Sachs taken in March when she and the foreign minister, Melanie Jolie, traveled to Israel and then on to Ramallah, where the pair posed for an official protocol photo with Mahmoud Abbas, the president of the Palestinian Authority. And the snapshot showed Abbas holding Sachs's arm, which outraged many in the Canadian Jewish community. After decades and decades of investing in fighting against anti-Semitism with Holocaust education, that what we have done in the past... At the time, Sachs defended her diplomatic mission, saying she asked Abbas some hard questions. Then another audience member began to heckle her. You have a choice. You can sit down or you can leave. And you can stop funding UNRWA. You can he was asked to leave, but not before he shouted out, stop funding UNRWA, a reference to the Canadian government resuming aid donations to the UN's Palestinian Refugee Agency, which Israel accuses of having some of its personnel participate in the October 7th massacres. We won't be uniform, but we will always be unified. In this critical moment when we find ourselves in when there are things we may disagree on, you've made your voices clear that you disagree on, with me on some of those things, and that's okay. But what we are unified on as Jews is that the state of Israel, its existence, not its survival, its existence, its right to be in the world is not up for debate. Its security is paramount. And its existence is one that we all have a deep and indelible connection to. Deputy Conservative Party leader Melissa Lansman was the clear crowd favorite as the Thornhill MP received one of the few standing ovations even before she had sent a single word. Then what came next was a harsh critique not only of the Liberal government's policies on Israel and on the Jewish issues here, including anti-Semitism, but also a blistering attack directly at Yara Sachs's effort at Middle East diplomacy. And we're here because yet another one of our sacred places had been attacked. And I wish that I could say that when I heard the news, I was shocked or I was surprised. But I wasn't. I wasn't shocked or surprised. Nearly 10 months after the horrors of October 7th, Jews here in Canada have come under threat like never before. And these acts, remember, they are perpetrated by a loud and radical minority in our society who don't respect our values and who don't respect our beliefs and who do not respect the rules in this country. And somebody needs to say that out loud. What's worse, though, is that they've been encouraged explicitly and implicitly by a much larger group of Canadians, including people in our own government including those who tonight I reluctantly share this stage with. And this shouldn't be a partisan issue, but it has become one since the government started kowtowing to the radical wing of their party. A government that hears the pleas from synagogues and community centers like this one and responds with silence they didn't even call when it happened. A government which can barely muster even the weakest condemnation of anti-Semitism and now can't do it without moral equivalence. A government which appoints vile anti-Semites to lecture you about diversity. Yeah. A government who voted to withhold arms from our democratic ally, who reinstated funding to UNRWA, whose leaders are obsessed with the annihilation of the Jewish people and took part in the biggest massacre of the Jewish people since the Holocaust. They sided with Hamas, and we will never forget that. <laughs> Call out a government which appoints an apologist of terror to lead the Human Rights Commun uh, Commission to regulate what you say. And, and, and is charged with protecting you against the very racism that he has espoused throughout his own history. A government, instead of standing with Israel, turned its back at the earliest moment and embarrassed our country by condemning things that did not happen. 
And instead of taking a principled position, they say one, group, one thing to one group of people and the opposite thing to another. And instead of banning terrorists and standing up to them, they hold their hands. And I will say this, and I am not afraid to say this, but caressing the hand of a Holocaust-denying terrorist who is in the 19th year of his four-year term whose mandate and his entire rule has been to celebrate the murder of the families and friends of people in this room is unforgivable. As the evening stretched on past 9 o'clock and 12 speakers clocked in at 2 hours and 20 minutes, some people began to leave. Some of the politicians left as well. But it was time to invite the final keynote address up to the stage, Liberal MP Anthony Housefather, who had flown in from Ottawa especially for the event. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Cantor. Thank you so much to all of you for staying. I'm the 13th speaker. <laughs> and how do you follow Marco Mendicino? House Father was recently appointed the Prime Minister's Special Advisor on the Jewish Community and Anti-Semitism, several months after the Montreal-area politician had mused about quitting his party. After nearly all of the Liberals except himself, Marco Mendocino and Ben Carr voted in favor of an NDP motion that entrenched stopping the sale of arms to Israel, renewed funding for UNRWA, and until the very last minute, when there were amendments made, would have seen Canada unilaterally recognizing Palestine as an independent state. And Yara Sachs was one of the Liberals who voted for that motion. The Conservatives all voted against. But Housefather came to Sachs's defense and gave a not-so-subtle reprimand to those who had just publicly criticized her. I know we're all mad, but shouting and screaming and saying hateful things to people doesn't solve the problem. What solves the problem is convincing. Honey is better than vinegar. And so, to me, it's not like I won't speak out. It is not like I won't speak out and defend Jewish rights every day. But I don't need to hate people and condemn them personally to do that. And I am going to keep doing my thing. Some Jewish voters think House Father should have quit, or at least tried to sit as an independent, if joining the Conservatives was the wrong fit for him. And he knows he's got a tough fight in his home riding of Mount Royal against a high-profile Jewish lawyer, Neil Oberman, who recently won the PC nomination for the next election in October of 2025. I can't promise that I will achieve every result, but I promise you that I'll move heaven and earth. I will work as hard as I possibly can day and night over the next year and three months so that I can make sure that the well I intend to believe me I intend to be there longer don't don't you get me wrong but I, in this position in in this position I I respect un, unlike somebody from the south I respect democratic results of anything um, I intend to work as hard as I can to try to make a meaningful difference for all of you and for all of our communities and for Israel So, I'm Yisrael Chai. Thank you for having me. And that's what Jewish Canada sounds like for this episode of the CJN Daily. Now, Toronto police say they did not make any arrests at the event. But hours ago, the leaders of Montreal's Jewish Federation and the UJA Federation of Greater Toronto have issued an email alert to their communities to be on heightened alert this coming weekend on the advice of the government of Israel, who has told all Israelis and Jews about Iran's warning it will retaliate for the assassinations of the political leader of Hamas, Ismail Haniya, who was killed in Tehran on Wednesday, and for the IDF strike in Lebanon this week that killed the Hezbollah mastermind of the soccer field rocket massacre of 12 Druze youngsters. Toronto police have agreed to increase their patrols. Montreal's Jewish community want the mayor to get the police to do the same and to crack down on planned days of rage rallies scheduled for this weekend. We at the CJN are monitoring the developments. Our podcast is produced by Zachary Judah Kaufman. Our executive producer is Michael Freeman, and our music is by Dov Beck Levine. Thanks for listening to the CJN Daily. 
Y'all remember that joke from Airplane? The old lady asked for some light reading. How about this leaflet? Famous Jewish sports legends. But in actuality, that's changing. Jews are crushing it in sports around the world, and we are here to celebrate them. Sandy Kopak gets his 10th strikeout. Sack! Hyman! His first career hat trick! 41 points for Diddy Obdia! It's Sue Bird's building! I'm Gabe. And I'm Jamie. We love Jews, and we love sports, but most of all, we love quelling over Jews in sports. Together, we host Mensch Warmers, the longest-running Jewish sports podcast in the world. Listen and subscribe at thecjn.ca and wherever you find your podcasts.